The Russian invasion of Ukraine was shocking, not just for its brutality, but for the resolve of the Ukrainian men and women who put their lives on the line to defend their homeland. As videos first started to emerge of Russian tanks rolling through major Ukrainian cities, countless headlines, including here at CBS, called it a modern-day David versus Goliath story. That was last year, but the comparison lives on. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told Western leaders in Munich just last week that their continued support for Ukraine is key to defeating, quote, the Russian Goliath. Let's bring in retired Army Colonel John Gentile. He's a senior historian at the RAND Corporation and associate director at the RAND ARIO Center. John, let's take a very wide scope view at the, uh, uh, of this uh, invasion. How has the story of this war evolved from those early days when many believed Russia yeah. would quickly seize the capital to where we are today? Yeah, uh, thanks, John. Um, yeah, I mean, in the weeks leading up to the war, when I looked at how uh, the Russian military had arrayed its forces in that circle from Belarus all the way down uh, uh, into uh, Kherson, uh, I didn't think they would invade. Mm -hmm. I did kind of. I did a troop to task analysis and just didn't believe that they had the right deployment of forces to invade. I, I, I was wrong. Um, and what we saw in the initial part of the invasion was a, a debacle on the part of the Russian side in terms of uh, the operational plan they came up with, um, the policy directive, all those kinds of things. And it's it's evolved. Uh, you know, the first the, the first month and a half, uh, Russia gave up on the Kiev assault, shifted east to the Donbass, uh, tried, wanted to secure all the Donbass there, wasn't successful. And then we had, you know, the next phase, which was the successful Ukrainian offensive in Kharkiv, um, which now the phase we're in now is appears to be a stalemate, but what I really think is it's the start point for the next phase of the war, which I really think will will be decisive um, over the next four to five months. Um, so tell us about that start point for the next phase and what are the characteristics of the next phase that would be different uh, from what we've seen so far? Right. I mean, clearly, I mean, some of the aid that the U.S. has given over the last four to five months, the introduction of HIMARS, now with the introduction of Western tanks, uh, infantry fighting vehicles, and what the Russians are trying to do, um, mobilizing large numbers of soldiers to try to carry out an offensive to gain all of uh, Donetsk province. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. They have not shown the ability to do combined arms operations. Uh, and I think we're seeing on the other side potentially uh, an upcoming Ukrainian counteroffensive um, with this buildup of Western tanks, uh, improved fighting vehicles, uh, those kinds of things. So, again, this is going to be a really interesting five to six months um, down the road. Um, and I think it will really tell us where the war is going to lead to and how it might end, John. You mentioned increasing U.S. assistance and also uh, assistance from the Germans who were reluctant at first. Put this in context for us in terms of U.S. engagement in conflict. I mean, uh, people use right. the word mission creep because there have been a lot of instances where the president and the administration have said, no, we're not going to do this, and then they have. Help us understand how you see this historically. Uh, sure. I, I mean, well, looking at the past year, uh, you know, one can look back in hindsight and second guess an administration, um, but over the last year, the, the 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 Biden administration has been accountable to the American people, um, and so I think that explains um, the course of this war and how American assistance has been uh, provided, along with NATO countries, uh, uh, to Ukraine. Um, so I so again, I think what what the West and other NATO countries have given Ukraine potentially are going to provide a significant uh, mechanized um, uh, punching force uh, in the months uh, ahead. You've been in combat. Assess Vladimir Zelensky as a war leader. None better, seems to me. Uh, and why he's is in that? the right place. He's in the right place. He's in the right time. Uh, he's he is unified or has been a big part of the unification of the Ukrainian people uh, to fight this war. Uh, he moves forward to potentially in dangerous situations. He's doing all the things that a successful uh, democratic uh, or wartime leader of a democracy sh uh, should be doing. Colonel John Gentile, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.